beautiful and disgusting at the same time. Ocean's Eleven vibe is unique is what I would say. It's a philosophical book. Hello, welcome. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Anne. If you're not new, welcome back my friends. I'm so excited you're here. Hope you had a good week. Today we are going to be talking about my five top books from Q1. Basically, books I think you should read, books I think you should add to your to be read list. If you're new around here, I read a lot. Well, what I consider a lot. I am on track to read 100 books this year. In Q1, I read about 25 ish books. Of the books that I read in Q1, I picked my five books that I felt like other people should read. The first book that we're going to start with is called Code Girls, and I need to look up the full title because she's a long one. Code Girls, the untold story of the American women code breakers who helped win World War II by Liza Mundy. This book is actually a nonfiction. It reads a little bit like a fiction. There are some more like narrative parts. There are also some more like nonfiction heavy parts. This book is obviously about women in World War II that had an immense impact on, well, the outcome of World War II. I'm not necessarily somebody who reads a lot of books about wars. I'm a sensitive soul name that film but I do like nonfiction books I also like books with strong feminine leads um, which we could argue that there are strong feminine leads in this book um, because they are like IRL strong feminine leads but basically women were not allowed to fight in World War II because of frankly sexist policies therefore a lot of women went into more admin roles um, because they wanted to help their country. And these roles, some of which were code breakers. I would argue that a code breaker is absolutely not an admin role, but this was a role that was apparently deemed appropriate for a woman. So a lot of very smart, very intelligent women ended up becoming code breakers, and it was their work that led to so many important victories within World War II. This book does a really good job of highlighting these really strong, important women. Um, and unfortunately, it also talks a lot about how they, even in the time where they were saving lives, they were treated poorly, disrespectfully, and frankly, completely inappropriately, simply because they were women. This book is like just a powerful piece of our history, particularly when it comes to women's rights. And I think this is an important read because it's... It sheds light on a piece of history that isn't widely talked about. Have you heard about the women codebreakers of World War II? Neither had I. It's very well written. The research in this book that the author has put into this book is cream of the crop. You can tell that she really wanted to do justice for these women, many of whom are still alive. And the reason why I think you should read this is because it sheds light on an important piece of history that isn't widely talked about and yet is incredibly vital. The next book that I think you should absolutely read is The Vaster Wilds by Lauren Groff. Sort of like a survivalist novel, not exactly. So hang in there as I describe this because for those of you who are not into that like survivalist vibe, you're gonna wanna tune out. Trust me, I was there. But don't. Our main character has run away from the uh, settlement and she is trying to survive in the vaster wilds so much of this book is about the actual act of surviving where does she find water how does she find food etc there are parts of this book that sort of throw back to her time in the settlement how she got where she was her life etc this book reads like a period piece like if you were like if honestly it reads like a Bronte novel or something almost. That is the language in which the author writes. She doesn't use punctuation like we normally do, you know, no quotation marks, things like that. And the book is very, I would almost describe the prose as lyrical, which sounds a little bit like, mm, but it works so well because this book is so incredibly immersive. Here you are following a young girl as she attempts to survive and 
you are consistently rooting for her the whole time. And that said, this book is simultaneously beautiful and disgusting at the same time. Again, pros, beautiful. Storytelling, beautiful. This book is very uh, descriptive. There are some rather squeamish parts. So if you're squeamish, FYI. The reason why I think you should read this book is because it is one of those books that will be your Roman Empire. It is my Roman Empire. I will read hundreds and hundreds of books and I will forever remember this book because it was like gritty, it was real, it was intense, and it's something that honestly kind of like pulls away all of the societal challenges, thoughts, etc. And you really get in there into you know, the survival of this girl. So that's why I said it's a little survivalist, but don't think like Hatchet or whatever, you know, that book that we read in like high school or middle school or whatever. The next book is Poison for Breakfast by Lemony Snicket. In particular, I would recommend listening to this book because Patrick Warburton narrates this book, an icon if ever there was one. So Lemony Snicket, you may know him as the author of the A Series of Unfortunate Events, um, those were all the rage when we were younger. If you're around my age, I'm sure you read them. This book is like a novel, I suppose. Frankly, it's a philosophical book, which I hesitate to even say that because if somebody were to say, oh, read this philosophical book, I'd be like, absolutely not. I'm yeeting out of here. And I don't want you to yeet. Do not yeet. It's like a little comedic, a little philosophical, a little novel-esque. It's a short story. It was like three hours or something on the audiobook. Um, and essentially, we have our main character. It is, in fact, Lemony Snicket. And the whole premise of the book is that he has eaten poison for breakfast. So he essentially goes through his plate and he tries to identify where each piece came from and if it was, in fact, poison. It sounds like weird, right? It sounds like a weird concept for a novel. And it is but it's also incredibly engaging, it's funny, it's entertaining. And the way that he writes, I love the way that he writes. He writes like satirical, but not like blatantly satirical. And I really think he has this gift of creating a world outside of the world. Like, I don't even know how to describe that. How does he world build with his language and his language alone? So if you liked the writing style of A Series of Unfortunate Events, you will absolutely like this. The other thing that I think is great about this book is that you might get a great breakfast idea out of this because what he eats for breakfast is like low-key a delicious breakfast. And um, I, in fact, ate that breakfast <laughs> for several days after I finished reading the book. So not only do you get a great story, thought-provoking, interesting, funny, you'll also get a stellar breakfast idea. Who doesn't love that? All right, the fourth book on my list here is The Art Thief, A True Story of Love, Crime, and a Dangerous Obsession by Michael Finkel. This is a nonfiction book. It's pretty short, it's pretty small. The book is based on a true story. Basically it details this famous art thief in his escapades across Europe and sort of like a little bit of his like childhood, his relationships, et cetera, what leads him to do what he does and sort of his, um, the story of how he was caught and things like that. However, the author, puts the story together as though it were a fiction book. So the way that he writes, he writes as though the thief is your main character and you are reading a fiction. I think coming out of this book, I have a different perspective on art, museums, this idea of like artifact collection. I think you should read this book because it was entertaining, it was fun. We're following an art thief, which like who doesn't love the like, you know, um, Ocean's Eleven vibe. And it's just an interesting like glimpse into the mind of a thief. We are at the end, my friends. The last book that I think you should read is The Scent of Rain and Lightning by Nancy Pickard. This book was one that I had not heard about before, but I saw it in the library when I was perusing and I picked it up. This book is a historical fiction. Um, it's got a little bit of a mystery in there. So you have that nice element. It takes place in a very small town. Essentially, we have our main character. Her name is Laurie Jo. Her mother disappeared when she was a child. 
her father was shot and killed and she grows up with her uncles and her grandparents in this very small town. Everybody knows what happened to her family. The man who was convicted of shooting her father is getting out of jail. He is coming back to the small town. So she's dealing with that. Also, his son, his name is Colin. He lives in the town or he's coming back to the town or something. And he has grown up notoriously as well because of the acts of his father. And so we kind of follow these two characters. We learn the truth about her mother and her father and all of these things. It's just an interesting, it was, man, this was an entertaining book. It almost reads, I wanna say like, almost like a little bit of a thriller-esque. It was just one of those books that I enjoyed and will think about, I will remember. It was a memorable book, particularly the end. I don't wanna say anything is unique is what I would say. It's not a story that I'd necessarily read before. All right, those are my top five most iconic books of Q1. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do read any of these books, please let me know what you think, if you agreed with my thoughts about them, if you have your own thoughts, if you have recommendations of books you think I should read, please drop them below in the comments. I am always looking for new books to read. At the end of Q2, I will have another video just like this for you of my most iconic books of Q2. And with that said, this is just your encouragement to get out there and read. If you don't read, pick it up, my friends. Reading is a great escape. And um, man, I love it. It's so good. With all of that said, thank you for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye. Literally a train, so freaking loud. And must you honk your little horn situation? What is it called? A train horn? Is that is it called a horn? Your noisemaker? I don't know. What is it called? Your beeper? It literally won't stop. It literally just keeps going. I'm gonna look that up. A train a whistle? Is it a whistle? A train whistle. Did you ever have those like wooden train things as a kid and if you blow into it it made like the train horn noise? That was like an iconic toy. They probably still sell those.